Display before you is a visualization of bicycle trail concentration across Europe, where all the violet streaks represent cycling routes. As you shift your gaze to the left-hand portion of this diagram, you'll spot a coastal nation bursting with these violet streaks, that's the Netherlands. Streaks, that's the Netherlands. This heavily inhabited country is no stranger to constructing impressive facilities, with bicycle trails being a crucial component of this infrastructure. The Netherlands is a nation with a population tallying up to 17.4 million and a geographical span just shy of 41.5 thousand square kilometers. Although smaller, it has a greater population density than the majority of its European neighbors. Therefore, they have devised ingenious and practical strategies for managing people's mobility within and across the nation, with the most prominent one being their remarkable bicycle infrastructure. It's as essential as everyone suggests, facilitating the movement of the country's 23 million bicycles. Speaking of which, having 23 million bicycles translates to a ratio of 1.3 bicycles per person, a statistic that borders on the absurd. To put it in perspective, consider the ratio of bicycles per person in the United States. Perhaps it's around 0.5. In actuality, it's 0.3, meaning if you encounter an American, there's a higher probability of them being overweight than being a bicycle owner. Returning to the topic at hand, the fusion of the Netherlands' comprehensive bicycle infrastructure and its exceptional public transit creates an impressively streamlined and effective system. Let's delve into how it functions. In the bustling city of Amsterdam, regular commuters resort to cycling to transit stations. Upon arrival, they stow their bicycles in massive parking structures designed specifically for bikes. From there, they journey via bus, tram, or train towards their ultimate destination. Nevertheless, more often than not, the quickest and most hassle-free alternative is merely biking all the way to their end location. But why is cycling such an optimal choice? What steps has the Netherlands undertaken to make this a reality? Simply put, the nation has made bicycling a breeze by offering 32,000 kilometers of bicycle trails that are more than just narrow lanes on busy roads, nutty roads. The Dutch approach is unique. They've demarcated cycling only lanes with red asphalt pavements. The only scenario where cars and bikes share the same path is when the speed limit is below 30 km per hour and vehicle traffic is minimal. Anything beyond that speed and there is a definitive partition like this one, even on freeways and roundabouts. However, the Dutch experience isn't just limited to cycling, particularly in their capital, Amsterdam. In all honesty, the most awe-inspiring infrastructure isn't even located in Amsterdam, but in Utrecht. This city, situated to the south of Amsterdam, is home to the world's largest bicycle parking facility, capable of accommodating over 12,500 bicycles and featuring round-the-clock surveillance. You might be inclined to think this is an extraordinary feat, impossible to replicate elsewhere, almost alien-like, but that's a misconception and there's a straightforward reason why. Consider the city of Rotterdam during World War II, where the city was virtually decimated and reduced to ruins, looking like this, looking like this. In the aftermath of considerable devastation, the Netherlands had to undertake a comprehensive reconstruction effort. They opted for a design centered around motor vehicles, which closely mirrored the construction style of North American cities. Given the Netherlands' current status, it's astonishing to contemplate that many of its cities nearly followed a similar trajectory. However, by the 1970s, the inhabitants of Rotterdam had grown weary of the high frequency of severe road accidents and the declining trend in cycling and walking. Thus, they called for transformation and the authorities responded favorably. Substantial investments were poured into public transportation and roads were redesigned to accommodate bike lanes. Consequently, 
the popularity of cycling was rejuvenated. This transformation demonstrates that even North American cities could implement similar changes if they choose to do so. Furthermore, the Netherlands' dedication and focus on people-oriented planning isn't confined to its urban centers. It extends into its suburbs as well. To illustrate this point, let's draw a comparison between typical Dutch suburbs and those in a rapidly growing state in the United States, such as Florida. Granted, Florida is three, four times larger than the Netherlands, but the comparison remains relevant. Here's a typical Miami suburb. What do you observe? There's plenty of greenery, but primarily, there are numerous roads designed specifically for vehicles. There are sidewalks, but they're narrow, barely able to fit both a cyclist and a pedestrian simultaneously. Now, let's examine a Dutch suburb. The houses here are considerably smaller, which is a critical detail because it allows for more communal spaces like parks and ample cycling and walking paths segregated from the main road by vegetation. I can fully appreciate why it might appear as a trade-off to have smaller houses. Although smaller homes might seem a drawback, they contribute to a system that values efficiency, which is essential if time is our most precious commodity. Dutch efficiency is iconic, but it wasn't always this way. The Netherlands has a history of flooding due to its low elevation and proximity to the North Sea. However, they've managed to overcome these challenges, evident in the fact that nearly 20% of the land is reclaimed from marshes, swamps, lakes, and the sea. How? Two words, Delta Works. This vast network of 13 dams and barriers, featuring sluices, locks, dikes, and levees, was constructed after a devastating storm in 1953. The result? A reduction in coastline by 700 kilometers, negating the need for weaker, maintenance, heavy levees and dams. Not only have they prevented floods, but the Dutch have also created new land, remarkably, without relying solely on modern technology. Initially, the Dutch would isolate and drain the areas they wished to reclaim, harnessing wind energy through windmills. This resulted in flatlands with a unique soil perfect for tulip cultivation, leading the Netherlands to account for 80% of global tulip exports. These innovative methods have earned the Netherlands prestigious recognitions, including hosting the world's largest storm surge barrier and Europe's most efficient seaport, the Port of Rotterdam. Strategically located at the delta of the Rhine and Meuse rivers, Rotterdam Port, about 1.5 times the size of Manhattan, handles significant traffic from the North Sea. Given that exports constitute 82.5% of the Netherlands' GDP Rotterdam port's importance is undeniable. In addition to ports, the Dutch excel in other infrastructures too. Consider Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport, Europe's third busiest, accommodating between 68 to 80 million passengers annually offering flights to 332 direct destinations via its six multi-directional runways. Despite its size being smaller than other major airports like Adolfo Suarez Madrid in Spain or Leonardo da Vinci International in Italy, Schiphol manages an hourly average of 110 to 120 aircraft. What's remarkable about Schiphol is the connectivity it offers. Upon arrival, Passengers have access to numerous transport options, including high-speed thalys and intercity trains, located directly beneath the terminal. From there, it's a short 15-minute journey to Amsterdam's central station, or a ride across the country on the Dutch rail network. Interestingly, the airport sits 4 meters below sea level on what was once the Harlem Lake. The Netherlands exemplifies intelligent design at its best. While some may perceive these methods as challenging to replicate, they can be applied anywhere in the world, given the right collaboration and commitment to people-centric, environmentally friendly, and forward-thinking infrastructure. Thank you for tuning in, and see you in the next one.